So a new series I'm doing recently on my channel is I'm going over certain Arrowverse characters, typically characters who haven't appeared very much but are very very important characters in the DC Universe, and go over what their timeline looks like based off everything we know so far, with a lot of things that I add myself. So far I've done Batman, Green Lantern, and then Wonder Woman, but now in this video we're doing Superman, a character who has a lot more appearances than those other characters, not counting John Diggle because he actually has an appearance outside of a cameo in this video. I'm only looking at the Earth-38 version of Superman, not the Smallville version, not the Superman Returns version, two characters who are appearing in the upcoming crossover, but also nothing outside of Earth-38. With that in mind, let's begin the timeline with the birth of Kal-El. So in the year 1979 on Krypton, Lara Lorvan gives birth to Kal-El, the son also of Jor-El, and not just a couple months later, Krypton is destroyed. Before the destruction of Krypton, Kal-El and his cousin Karv Zor-El are sent to Earth in pods, but Kara's pod is knocked off course into the Phantom Zone where she spends 24 ageless years. Kal-El's pod, however, lands in Smallville in Kansas in the United States in uh, North America on Earth, and is found along with Kal himself by by Jonathan and Martha Kent, a couple who have recently learned that they can't have biological children of their own, and see this baby as a gift from God because they can't have their own children, and they name him Clark Kent. Because of Kal-El's pod, the US government now learns of aliens, and while they never knew of the baby, or at least they never found him, never knew where he went, or whatever the baby was, uh, because of these, and now that they know that aliens exist, they form the DEO in secret. So between the year 1979 and 1997, Clark is raised by the Kents and taught very strong morals. Clark is sometime in here, honestly I have no idea when, it doesn't really matter, but he meets Jeremiah and Eliza Danvers who help him teach him to use his abilities. Uh, Jeremiah and Eliza obviously know that he's an alien, but they don't tell anybody and they just basically keep it a secret. Also between the year 1993 and 1997, Clark attends Smallville High and meets Pete Ross who he becomes best friends with and Lana Lang who he dates for a while. In the year 1997, at the age of 18, Clark graduates high school. In the year 1999, also uh, Lana and also Pete leave Smallville in separate occasions, so Clark is left there by himself until the year after that, 2000, in the year in, in when he's 21 years old, Clark moves to Metropolis and becomes Superman. Now the reason I put this in the year 2000 is because we know, based off Supergirl, that in the year 2003 she landed on Earth, and by that time he was already a known hero to the public, and uh, not only this, but 2000 is also the year that Bruce Wayne became Batman on Earth-1 based off my timeline, also when Diana Prince became Wonder Woman on Earth-1. If you want to check out those timelines, that will be in the top right corner of this video, and I wanted to make the Trinity all become the heroes that they are in the same year, which is the beginning of the 21st century, the year 2000. So in the year 2000, Clark Kent becomes Superman as he moves to Metropolis. He becomes a reporter at the Daily Planet and meets Perry White, Lois Lane, Cat Grant, and Jimmy Olsen. Also in the year 2000, as a direct result of Clark becoming Superman, Brainiac learns of Superman, determines that he is a Kryptonian, and comes to Earth to destroy the last remnants of Krypton. This is when uh, Clark learns about his Kryptonian heritage because the Kents never took the pod home because that was kind of impossible, but also the US government took it in the end. He never learned about its Kryptonian heritage, and he also never found the Fortress of Solitude. Because of Brainiac coming to Earth, Clark does end up defeating him, but Brainiac does uh, teach him, or or tell him about his Kryptonian heritage and that his planet was destroyed, but also this, oh, after this Clark learns of the Fortress of Solitude, which becomes his base of operations. In the year 2001, the picture that we see in the pilot episode of Supergirl where Jimmy Olsen, who it was now then James Olsen, took a picture of Superman, the first ever picture of Superman that happens in the year 2001. Jimmy is saved by Superman and Clark reveals his identity to his now best friend and even gives him a watch that he can press to signal for Superman's help. Clark lets Jimmy take a picture of him as it was pretty much impossible for anybody to do that before because he was moving too fast when he was flying, but uh, this becomes the first official picture of Superman and goes on to win a Pulitzer Prize for Jimmy. 
In the year 2003, Kara's pod leaves the Phantom Zone and lands on Earth. I don't think it's ever explained how she left the Phantom Zone, but because she was in the Phantom Zone this entire time, she never aged for all these 24 years, and the baby cousin that she thought she had was now an adult and is Superman. So Superman finds her and welcomes his cousin to Earth, and also learns about his cousin now, as Kara tells him that they are cousins, but Kara is then adopted by the friends of Superman that I mentioned earlier, the people who, who taught him to hone his abilities, or at least helped him. Jeremiah and Eliza Danvers. In the year 2004, Superman has a team up with the DEO, and he learns that their that their leader Hank Henshaw is actually a Martian named John Jones who took over Hank's life. This leads to a fight, but then they do realize that they are not enemies. Superman sees that John is one of the most powerful beings in the universe based off of their fight, which is something that he mentioned. I'm pretty sure in season two, but Superman and Martian Manhunter become close allies as they team up in this mission, or whatever it was, it doesn't really matter. In the year 2005, Saturn Girl, Lightning Lad, and Cosmic Boy return to the 21st century to get Superman's help. I will expand on this if I ever get to a Legion of Superheroes Hour Reverse timeline, but I don't really know why I'm putting this in 2005. Like I said, there are certain things that just happen in some sort of year between when he became Superman and when Supergirl started, so I just thought 2005 would work. But the reason I'm putting this here at all is because whenever we saw the Fortress of Solitude in the first, I think, two seasons of Supergirl, and maybe even after that, there was always a Legion of Superheroes ring in there, which means that he probably helped the Legion in the future as the Legion probably came back to get his help, and he became an honorary member. So in the year 2005, I'm doing Saturn Girl, Lightning Lad, and Cosmic Boy because those are the three members that typically come back to get Superman, and those are the three founding members, but just not in this universe. Lightning Lad exists, but we don't know about Cosmic Boy, but I'm just assuming he does. Anyway, during his visit to the future, Clark learns about his influence on the creation of a Legion of Superheroes, which isn't as important as it is in the comics, as he learns about his cousin's direct influence on the creation of the Legion as he teams up with mon -El. Specifically, Superman does become an honorary member of the Legion, even getting a ring, but I think this is why his mentality later when Supergirl becomes a hero is that she's better than him, which is something that always annoyed me, but I think this could explain why, because he sees Supergirl as the hero who directly led to the creation of this Legion in, the, in a thousand years in the future, and I think that can create the mentality of thinking that she is better than him. So obviously Clark returns to the present, not a single moment after he left, so no time has passed, so there is more to happen in the year 2005. Superman teams up with Jean again, we know that in the year 2005 this happened. Jean and Clark found a green rock that seemed to hurt Clark that came from Krypton. Jean kept it in a store at the DEO, calling it Kryptonite, which angers Clark, and this is when the two heroes have a falling out, which is why they don't really seem to like each other very much when Clark visits the D.O. in Season 2 of Supergirl, which is, I think, like 11 years after this, but still, it does happen in 2005. In the year 2007, Mr. Mixie's Pedala comes to Earth and is defeated by Superman, banished back to the 5th century after Superman tricks him to say his uh, name backwards. Now, here in this universe, I'll make it so that Mr. Mixie's Pedala is banished for 10 years, so a decade, instead of the 90 days he's banished for in the comics, which in a live-action TV show universe wouldn't really make much sense, he would be recurring all the time, but considering he debuted, he appeared in Supergirl Season 2 and near the end, which took place in 2017, let's say that in the year 2007, 10 years before that, he went up against Superman, was defeated, banished back to the 5th uh, dimension for 10 years, and then came back in the year 2017, this time setting his sights at Supergirl instead. After his fight with Mr. Mixus Pedalux, Superman gets rid of his red trunks from his costume, which is confirmed to have happened in sometime around this year, so let's just say 2007. Anyway, this is around the time that the world will learn about aliens, not just the US government, or also anybody who knows no, no Superman, but General Zod launches his first attack on the Earth, and Superman ends up stopping him with the help of Lex Luthor. Uh, Zod is locked up in the Phantom Zone, this is when the world learns of the existence of aliens, and Superman formally reveals to the world that he is an alien himself. This is also when Superman and Lex Luthor become very good friends, even forming a sort of alien fighting team. In the year 2008, Brainiac returns, but is defeated yet again, this time by Superman, with the help of Lex Luthor. 
In the year 2009, Mongol attacks Earth, and while Superman and Lex try to fight back, Superman ends up being captured by, by Mongol. Mongol's attack on Earth leads to the death of Lionel Luthor, and the reason Mongol came back to, or came to Earth was to get Superman to fight in War World. Now, it was mentioned in Supergirl Season 2 by Superman that he spent some time on War World, and when he did, he learned how to fight better. Now, the reason I'm putting it here is, is because, and why I said he, he led to the death of Lionel Luthor, is because I think Mongol's invasion of Earth and taking Superman directly taking uh, directly killing Lionel but also attacking Earth because of Superman himself will create Lex Luthor's hatred for Superman and thinking that uh, aliens are attracted to Earth because of Superman himself and also it fits with Superman being on War World so Superman is brought to War World to be a glory uh, glorified gladiator for the crowd's amusement Superman spends a couple months on War World learning to fight better and honing his abilities but then Superman ends up defeating Mongol basically overthrowing the probably tyrannical uh, rule that he has on War World and ends up escaping back to Earth. On his way back to Earth, Clark comes across a baby Sun Eater, which he kept as a pet in the Fortress of Solitude, which we saw sometime in Supergirl. I don't remember when, but I might put it on screen if I, if I looked it up. Anyway, Superman returns to Earth, but as he does, he learns of what Lex has been doing while he was gone. Lex, because of his father's death, began to kill any alien that came to Earth and any alien he went up against while Superman was away. Like I said, due to his father's death at the hands of aliens, Superman tries to stop him, which is when Lex learns that Mongol came to Earth is specifically to retrieve Superman so that he can fight for him in his arena. This causes Lex to believe that the alien invasions, every single one with General Zod, Brainiac, and now Mongol, are all because specifically of Superman, and he believes that Superman's presence attracts aliens to Earth. Lex Luthor then sets out to destroy Superman, and this is the beginning of their epic rivalry. It's also around this time, also in 2010, that Ben Kroll becomes Reactron and fights Superman over the course of the years a couple times between 2010 and 2015, one time almost killing him, but is always defeated in the end. But also, between the years 2010 and 2015, Superman and Lex Luthor have a recurring battle and rivalry for those five years, where Lex tries to kill Superman or at times discredit him, and Superman always stops him. One of their fights involves Lex triggering a fault line in California which Superman stops. One of their fights, or at least arguments, involves Lex mass-producing his exosuit, or Lexosuit, to anyone, which again, Superman stops. Over the years, Lex begins to convince himself that the reason he wants to kill Superman is because people become too dependent on Superman and they need to fend them for themselves, but it, it's pretty clear that his real reasoning being his personal hatred for Superman, and also, which is, this is something that I'm adding myself, because Lionel is dead in the present day, he's never really mentioned all that much, maybe Lex loses a part of his, or a part of his uh, motivation is that he blames Superman for the death of his father, at least, you know, uh, in some sort of way, but also because uh, he thinks that aliens are attracted to Earth because of Superman, but this happens over the course of these five years. One other thing that happens during Superman and Lex Luthor's war, basically, over the course of the years is that Batman and Superman team up for the first time. This is the year 2012. The timeline that I created for Batman earlier uh, doesn't really matter here because this is the year 38 Batman, so I could really put it anywhere. The reason I put it during the war between Superman and Lex Luthor is because during Season 4 of Supergirl, we saw some notes from Lex Luthor where he talks about using Scarecrow and Poison Ivy against Superman, and I put both of those things some point in the war between Superman and Lex. Luthor between 2010 and 15. So in the year 2012, Batman arrives in Metropolis to investigate a case, which leads him to Superman, and they come head to head, which is why they get the the reputation of being frenemies, because this is not the only time they end up fighting, and I'll get to that other one later, but it does involve Poison Ivy. But after their fight, which Superman clearly wins because Batman was completely unprepared for Superman, Superman and Batman team up against Lex Luthor as they put their differences aside, and it's revealed that Lex Luthor has been working with Scarecrow. Lex uses, or attempts to use, the fear gas against Superman, which ultimately fails. Batman and Superman defeat Luthor and Scarecrow. Also in 2012, John Kent dies of a heart attack. It was mentioned, or was hinted at during the Elseworlds crossover, that Martha Kent was living by herself on the Smallville farm, which probably hints that John Kent is dead. It was never mentioned that he died during Supergirl, so it had to kind of happen before Supergirl started, but not really be that recent. So I think 2012, three years before Supergirl started, makes sense for the year John Kent dies. Also in this year, Maxima comes to Earth to pursue, to pursue Superman. He rejects her, and she goes on to 
to uh, to basically throw a rampage and kind of a tantrum. Superman defeats her and she's locked up at the DEO. But this, uh, because of this, what uh, what happens here with Maxima, Clark and Lois begin the relationship at this point, and Superman reveals his identity to Lois as well. Now this is 12 years after they met in this timeline, which is a little excessive for how long they waited, or Clark waited, I guess, to tell Lois his identity and for them to start dating. But the way they talked about the relationship in season uh, two of Supergirl, it didn't feel like it was a relationship that's been like uh, going on for over a decade, while it kind of felt like one that maybe has been going on for four years at that point. So 2012, I think, does work. In the year 2013, Lex Luthor attempts to use Poison Ivy against Superman, which, like I said, he that something was with Poison Ivy was written in his journal, but because of Poison Ivy and Superman, it's obvious that this is a reference to the Batman Hush storyline in which Hush used Poison Ivy to control Superman in order for Superman to fight Batman. So, in the year 2013, Batman is battling a villain named Hush, who uses Poison Ivy to control Superman in Metropolis. Batman fights Superman this time, they're more evenly matched because Batman is more repaired, and he even has kryptonite. Lois Lane helps Superman snap out of uh, Poison Ivy's control over him, and Batman and Superman defeat Poison Ivy. As it turns out, Lex actually gave Hush the idea of using Poison Ivy and the resources of using her against Superman, so that was also a part of Superman's timeline. So after all these years of Superman and Lex Luthor battling it out, basically being at a war with each other, 2015 is where it all came to a head. One final showdown between Superman and Lex Luthor is where Lex actually turned Earth's sun red, which is uh, was something that we actually saw in during Supergirl season four during a flashback. He kidnaps Lena Luthor and makes him wa makes her watch while it seems like he kills a bunch of people, but then in the end he is arrested and basically Superman defeated him. Clark and J. James then both agree that James should move to National City after, I didn't mention this, but it turns out it was actually mentioned uh, oh, a couple times during Supergirl that James was kidnapped by Lex Luthor at least twice, so because of this, James decides to move to National City, and in this very same year, Cara Danvers becomes Supergirl. So 2016, Superman comes to National City to help Kara fight Non, but is knocked out by Myriad due to having grown up on Earth, unlike Kara, who is virtually unaffected by Myriad. So Supergirl does defeat Non, but Superman then, a couple weeks later, or it seems like maybe a month or two later, Superman comes to National City. After saving the venture with Kara, the pair team up to take down Metallo. The year 2017, Zod returns and is practically the main villain of Superman in this year. If this was a TV show, then like season 17, General Zod would be the main villain. The reason I say this is because, as we saw in the penultimate episode of Supergirl season 2, at that point, Superman considered General Zod to be his greatest enemy, which in this timeline wouldn't really work because it would obviously be Lex Luthor. However, maybe in the year 2017 specifically, Superman already defeated Lex Luthor and Zod was his current threat, so he considered at that point Zod to be his main enemy, so Zod escapes from the Phantom Zone in the year 2017 and enacts his revenge on Superman. Later, Superman teams up with Supergirl to take down the Taximites, but then, in the final confrontation between Superman and Zod, because of some sort of circumstance, Superman ends up killing Zod, which is something that was mentioned in Supergirl Season 3, as well as the fact that Zod was dead, but then resurrected in the 31st century. This is also why he goes to the, to the future to fight that resurrected General Zod, actually before before he ever fought Zod in the present day. Again, I'll expand on that even more if I ever get to a Legion of Superheroes timeline. In 2018, during the terraforming of Earth, Superman helps save Madagascar and a couple other locations. Then, Supergirl turret tells Clark about Argo City and Clark and Lois go there, and this is when Clark actually impregnates Lois during their visit to Argo City. Because of the fact that Lois was pregnant, Clark and Lois decide that they're going to stay on Argo City, because if Lois gives birth to a Kryptonian on Earth, it's definitely going to kill her. So they decide to stay there, but before doing that, they return to Earth, basically to say their goodbyes for a while, but they do go to Kent Farm. They're about to tell uh, Kara that they're going to leave to Argo City and live there for a while, but then Oliver Queen and Barry Allen come to Earth-38, their body swap, they get Clark and uh, Kara's help to defeat Amazo, and then after reality has changed yet again, Superman helps uh, by Barry and Oliver uh, rewrite reality as he actually directly uses the Book of Destiny and fixes the Earth-1 reality. Clark then proposes to Lois and they move to Argo City. 
Now, while Clark and Lois are engaged, it was never mentioned that they got married during Supergirl Season 4 and 5, and I would assume that Supergirl would actually go to that wedding, so I'm guessing they're not going to get married until Crisis on Infinite Earths, and maybe that's actually why they return. So before they get married, Lois gives birth to a boy, and they name him John. It's not confirmed that it's going to be a boy, not confirmed that it's going to be John, but I'm assuming based off the comics that they are going to give birth to, or she's going to give birth to a boy, and he will later become Superboy. But anyway, in the year 2019, uh, Superman, or Clark and Lois, get married, and they help the Arrowverse heroes fight the Anti-Monitor as well as the Shadow Demons. During this time, Superman races Reverse Flash. This would be the Matt Letcher version, which is something that Reverse Flash mentioned during the Crisis on Earth X storyline and crossover. Superman does lose this race, but that is something that happens. And as of 2019, 40 years after the beginning of the timeline, this is what we know so far. This is actually technically the shortest timeline so far, as all the other ones were at least more than 40 years. However, the reason this video is so much longer is because Superman is an actual character in the universe, other, unlike all, the, all, all those other characters who were just cameos or mentions other than John Diggle. But for Superman, there are so many huge events that were mentioned that we know about that would make sense to mention in this timeline that I have to go over, hence this video being as long as it is. But let me know in the comments down below which hero, villain, anything you want me to do next for this series. If you like this video, make sure to leave a like, share, and subscribe, and thanks for watching.